Welcome to the Math 3 lesson summary video for the task Pulling a Rabbit Out of the Hat. The purpose of this task is to solidify student understanding of inverse functions and to formalize the process for writing inverse functions. So you can see it starts off with a magic trick. Uh, you take a number and to that number you add 6 and multiply by 2 then subtract 12 and divide by 2 and you end up with what you started with. And the principles behind this magic trick, as it's called, are inverse functions. So you'll see as we go through this task that it's not magic, it's just math. And you'll be able to come back to this at the end and write function notation for the function, the original function here of adding 6 and multiplying by 2, and then its inverse function of subtracting 12 and dividing by 2. And it will make a lot of sense once you finish this task how to do that. So in each situation, uh, the first eight problems, we have an input of x equals 7, and we're putting that into some f of x function, and we're getting a temporary output there in the middle. Then we're taking that number, we're putting it into the inverse function, and we're ending up with 7 again. So in each case, when we put an, the number 7 into f of x, and then put the result into the inverse of f of x, f inverse of x, we should end back up where where we started at seven. You'll, so you'll see that is a way we're testing our function rules every time. Uh, it could be any number, they just pick seven. So in this problem we have f of x is two x minus five. So let's write out the operations here and their order. So first we have x being multiplied by two and then that result is being subtracted by five. So if I substitute x equals 7 into that function rule. We have 2 times 7 is 14, and 14 minus 5 is 9. So in order to find the inverse function, I need to do the opposite operations in the reverse order. So the opposite of subtracting by 5 is adding 5, and the opposite of multiplying by 2 is dividing by 2. So what that would look like in algebraic form is x plus 5 divided by 2. So that is the inverse function in this problem. Now let's test it out. We substituted x equals 7 into f of x and we got 9. So if we substitute 9 into this function, 9 plus 5 is 14 and 14 divided by 2 is indeed 7. So we got back out what we started with, which should be the case when I'm substituting into a function and then into its inverse. So that's one way to check and make sure that my inverse function is accurate. Number six is a little bit more difficult because of the operations, but again, we can use the same process. If we look at f of x, we can see it's first subtracting three and then being squared. So reverse op opposite operations in the reverse order. The opposite of squaring something is square rooting, and then the opposite of subtracting three is adding three. So I square root first and then add three, and that's what my inverse function should look like in algebraic form. Let's test it out. Previously, substituting 7 into f of x, as you can see in the middle of the screen, 7 minus 3 was 4, 4 squared was 16. So if I substitute 16 into the inverse function rule, the square root of 16 is 4, and 4 plus 3 is 7. So I've verified that my rule is accurate, or at least works for that case. And again, you could do this process with any number they've just chosen seven for this task. Let's go on to number three. This is a good problem because it connects what we're doing in this task, writing inverse functions, with what we've learned in the rest of the module about logarithms. So I have an f of x, which is two to the x power, and you can see that two to the seventh power is 128. So we know that the inverse of exponential functions are logs. So the inverse of the exponential function two to the x is log base 2 of x. So if I take the log base 2 of 128 using a calculator or my brain, I can verify that that is indeed 7. So we got back out what we originally put in after going through both the function and its inverse. Let's finish with one that involves logarithms and a two-step function. So the function is 2 to the x power minus 10. So first we have x in the exponent, 2 to the x power, and then 
10 is subtracted. So when I do opposite operations in the reverse order, the opposite of subtracting 10 is adding 10, and the opposite of 2 to the x power is again log base 2. So what that will look like is in parentheses x plus 10 to indicate that happens first, and then log base 2 outside of that. So to test it out, if I take the 118 that I got from the f of x function, substituting in x equals 7, log base 2 of 118 plus 10 is log base 2 of 128, which you already know from the last problem, is indeed 7. So that's the process that I like to use for finding inverse functions. I like to write it out in words and use the words in this kind of arrow diagram that you see at the bottom to help me figure out the steps for the inverse and then finish off by writing it in algebraic form. You may be able to just look at it and then write it in algebraic form from that. And if you can, that's great for you. But this is the process that has helped me the most and has helped my students in the past. The task finish with, finishes with problems 9 through 11. These are reflection problems on the processes that you've used. So you'll want to go through, finish the remaining problems that we didn't go over in this video, and then respond to these questions. Your answers are going to vary, so you'll want to discuss these with some of your friends in class uh, the next time you go to class, um, or run them by your teacher. But one of the things that you should notice that was a fundamental idea throughout problems 1 through 8 is we have this idea of when I put in a number to f of x, in this task it was always 7, but generically speaking, when I put in an x to the function and I get out a y, if I take that y and put it into the inverse, then I should get back out x. We should end up with what we started after we go through a function and its inverse, substituting into both. And so the fancy way that that would be written, the most sophisticated way you'll see that written, is that f inverse of f of x equals x. And that is something that you'll learn much more about in your next level math class, but just wanted to introduce it to you here. Thank you for watching. If you need help with the Ready, Set, Go videos, then please be sure to check out the Canvas site for your class and the Ready, Set, Go support videos located in Canvas.